with uh, company structures. How do those broader responsibilities impact your ability to recruit broad board members? And uh, what frameworks and what impact does that have on current board members as well? And how does that impact your ability to actually recruit prospective members and board members into your organisation? Once again, it's not just around what these factors are, but how likely are they and how do you mitigate those impacts? And not only what does it mean for yourself, but what does it also mean for your competitors? And Nick, a very good example based on uh, your organisation, looking at uh, who your competitors are. So you, why you may not have direct competitors, you're right, it is around that broader attitude around uh, recycling. And uh, that broader aspect around people viewing, you know, is recycling more difficult than just uh, the traditional view of rubbish collection? How do you actually encourage people to shape some of the broader attitude trends? Once we have all this data, we move into the strategy phase. And this is where you start to hone into your key messages, looking at uh, who your target markets are, how you reach your potential customers and your potential stakeholders, the composition of your products and services, and what that unique value proposition is. In the corporate world, it tends to be called a unique selling proposition. I much prefer to use the term unique value proposition. Ultimately, it's about you offering value to the people that you want to reach. It's about offering value to your clients. It's about you offering value to government if you're receiving government funding. It's about you offering value to your business partners. It's about you offering value to the volunteers and members and board members that are part of your organisation. And also offering value to staff. You know, if, you, if your marketing strategy wants to look at becoming a, an employer of choice, how do you offer that value to staff so that you're able to actually make your organisation an attractive place in terms of recruitment purposes? So what are your marketing objectives? So looking at uh, the purpose of your marketing plan and ultimately how do these objectives relate to your business plan? You need to be able to articulate these objectives. So summarise those objectives into where you want your organisation to be from a marketing perspective over 12 months, over three years, in the broader horizon up to five years as well. And a very good example from Samantha in the comments around uh, where there is a strong competition in putting together proposals for corporate sponsorship where once again it comes down to identifying the needs that you're able to fulfil, not just in terms of what you deliver, but also in how it aligns with corporate partners as well. When you're working with corporate partnerships, it's around uh, looking at that multi-pronged approach where you're able to link your key messages and your key deliverables back to what those corporate partners want to achieve as well. Marketing ultimately is collaborative. It needs to involve the entire organisation. You want to be able to target your key stakeholders. You want to be able to seek feedback. You want to be able to review your findings. You want to be able to workshop uh, those methodologies and those outcomes so that you can ensure that goals are shared. And uh, particularly where, as I mentioned, implementation may actually rely on others. The greater the degree of ownership over your plans and your strategic direction, the greater outcomes you're going to achieve through that implementation process. So what tools can you use? Well, you can conduct workshops. And workshops can be very useful in the initial phases as you basically put everything on the table and work through what it is that you want to achieve. But you can also use workshops to share the research that you have identified, some of the insights that you've been able to uh, analyse and what it actually means. You can uh, review those findings and actually work with other areas of your organisation to determine what their impact actually means. Once again, surveys can be quite useful in getting uh, a snapshot of how people view the direction of your organisation and what opportunities may exist. Uh, there was discussion before around uh, 500 being that target figure around surveys. Ultimately, it will depend on how many people you want to reach. Typically, you'd want at least a 10% response rate. So you want to make sure that you're getting something that's fairly representative. If you have membership categories, that should be 10% response rates around each of those member categories. 
not just your membership overall. And this is where it comes down to your market segmentation. You want to be able to drill down, perhaps not just into membership categories, but what each of those demographics are in those categories as well. You know, if you're a professional services organisation or if you're a professional association, say you're the Australian Marketing Institute, you may want to actually segment uh, your corporate membership into the size of marketing firms. So in that case, you'd want a uh, representative sample around large marketing firms versus uh, single person consultancy versus those in between. So while they, have a broad, while they have a broad corporate membership category, you actually want to be able to break that down into each of those various segments. And this brings us to knowing who your target market is. So who are they? Why are you targeting them? Where are they? And how do you reach them? You want to be able to connect your target market to your strengths. And this might be both uh, your current strengths, but also developing strengths as well. Ultimately, that linking to your target market creates your value proposition. And that enables you to actually develop your key marketing tools to reach that target market. And your target market needs to be broader than just uh, we're targeting X people in our general locality. It needs to look at those specific marketing attributes that you want to reach and those specific demographics. Is there a particular age of people that you want to reach? Is it uh, a cohort within your general locality? Because ultimately this will shape how you respond. Looking at do you differentiate? Do you actually develop a point of difference between your competition and leverage those points of difference? And that can be particularly important in working with funding partners where you actually want to be able to stand out from the crowd and show that investing in your organisation delivers greater or more targeted outcomes than other organisations? Or do you innovate? Do you do what others do, but do it more effectively? This is going to be particularly important as we move to an increasingly competitive grant space where you will, be able to, you will need to demonstrate that ability to deliver greater outcomes and as effectively as possible. Or do you simply imitate and follow the competition? Ultimately, what you want to be able to do here is create value. Because what you want is a unique value proposition that is sustainable, that provides an advantage and is able to allow you to demonstrate why it is important. It's about ensuring that uh, that unique value proposition is respected